I stopped turning compost when I found this 1,000-year-old trick that heats it naturally. Tired of turning your compost pile every few days only to find it still hasn't heated properly? What if I told you there's a method that produces rich black compost without the backbreaking work of constant turning? On today's Soil and Crops Central video, we're uncovering a 1,000-year-old technique that naturally heats compost, dramatically accelerates decomposition, and keeps your pile active with minimal effort. This isn't some modern shortcut. It's a proven method that combines simple science, precise layering, and passive heat management to create a powerhouse compost pile right in your backyard. The Ancient Secret to Hot Compost Without Turning Most gardeners believe turning is essential to generate heat and accelerate decomposition. While regular aeration does mix microbes and oxygen, it also disrupts the delicate balance of bacteria and fungi that produce the heat your pile needs. The method we're exploring today uses naturally heated pipes buried in your compost to circulate warmth and air, effectively replacing manual turning. The concept is simple. Microbes generate heat as they break down organic matter, and pipes provide channels that evenly distribute this heat throughout the pile. This mimics the temperature spikes you would get by flipping your pile without ever touching a shovel. Materials for the pipes are straightforward. Perforated PVC or drainage pipes are ideal because they allow heat to escape from the center, while simultaneously drawing in fresh air to sustain microbial activity. When combined with correct layering, these pipes create a self-regulating system where temperature and moisture remain stable. The heat spreads naturally, accelerating the breakdown of both carbon-rich brown materials like dried leaves, straw, and shredded paper, and nitrogen-rich green materials such as kitchen scraps, fresh grass clippings, and manure. The appeal of this method is obvious. Less labor, more stable heat, and faster composting without the constant hassle of turning. Understanding the science behind heat and decomposition is key. Compost heating relies on microbial metabolism. Bacteria and fungi feed on organic matter, releasing energy in the form of heat. To maximize this, the right ratio of materials is critical. For every part of green, nitrogen-rich material, you need two to three parts of brown, carbon-rich material by volume. Too much green and your pile becomes soggy, smells, and fails to heat. Too much brown and decomposition slows dramatically. Moisture is equally important. The pile should be as damp as a wrung-out sponge, not dripping wet, to allow microbes to thrive. Insulation, you know, it really enhances natural heat retention. A thick layer of straw, cardboard, or even just a thin layer of soil on top of the pile traps heat and moisture. This lets those hardworking microbes maintain high activity without drying out. Now, the addition of perforated pipes, well, that just amplifies this effect. They kind of function like natural radiators inside your compost, distributing heat and oxygen from those microbial hotspots in the core all the way to the edges. This ensures the entire pile stays active, reducing the need for turning and avoiding those pesky temperature dips that often plague large piles. The experiment that changed everything. Over at Soil and Crop Central, we conducted a side-by-side -side experiment to see how well this ancient method performs in real-world conditions. We built two identical compost piles using the same materials, same starting temperature, and same moisture levels. One pile was turned traditionally every few days, while the other was set up with perforated pipes buried horizontally throughout the base and middle layers. Each pile measured approximately one cubic meter, which is a common backyard size for small to medium gardens. Every day, we recorded internal temperatures at multiple points using a compost thermometer checked moisture levels and observed the breakdown of organic matter. Within the first week, the pile with naturally heated pipes achieved internal temperatures of 60 degrees Celsius, while the turned pile fluctuated between 55 and 65 degrees, but required constant effort to maintain these highs. By the third week, the pipe-enhanced pile had visibly more decomposed material, a richer smell, and significantly less surface drying. 
the experiment confirmed that when done correctly, this method can replicate, and sometimes even outperform, traditional turning without the labor. So, to replicate this method at home, you'll want to start by choosing a location that's partially shaded and, you know, has good drainage. Next, lay down a base of coarse brown material, about 6 to 12 inches thick, to allow airflow beneath the pipes. Then, position perforated pipes horizontally, making sure they're spaced to cover the entire pile. The length and number of pipes really depend on your pile size. For small backyard piles, around 1 cubic meter, you'll need 1 or 2 pipes, while larger piles, over 4 cubic meters, might require several pipes spaced evenly. Now begin layering your organic materials over those pipes, alternating between greens and browns in the right ratio, one part green to two or three parts brown. Each layer should be about four to six inches thick. After each layer, just lightly moisten it to keep that sponge-like dampness, making sure the microbes have the water they need to generate heat. Once your pile reaches the height you want, cover it with straw, cardboard, or a thin layer of soil to help retain heat. The pipes will distribute warmth naturally, so you won't need to turn the pile as often. Be sure to monitor the pile, and if you notice the edges getting dry, just sprinkle them lightly with water to maintain even moisture throughout. This method is, well, pretty flexible. For small garden piles, say between 2 and 5 square meters, one or two pipes in a 1 to 2 cubic meter pile should do the trick. Medium gardens, about 5 to 15 square meters, will benefit from 2 to 4 pipes and 2 to 4 cubic meters of compost. And for large gardens, anything over 15 square meters, it's best to divide your compost into multiple smaller piles, each with its own pipes. This approach actually preserves heat more effectively than a single giant pile, since temperature and oxygen distribution are easier to control. No matter the size though, keeping the right green to brown ratio and moisture level is honestly essential for success. So after about six to 12 weeks, the pipe assisted pile produced this dark, crumbly, nutrient rich compost that smelled earthy and fresh, all while needing only minimal intervention. Temperature readings showed a more stable internal heat profile compared to the turned pile with way fewer extreme highs and lows. Moisture retention was also a lot more consistent and decomposition happened faster right at the core. Now, while you'll still want to check occasionally to keep the edges from drying out, this method really cuts down on labor and still delivers some pretty exceptional results. So, the takeaway is pretty clear here. Naturally heated pipes are definitely not just some gimmick. They actually create a low-effort, high-performance composting system that really takes advantage of microbial activity and passive heat transfer. By combining the right layering, precise ratios, good moisture control, and some insulation, you can transform ordinary compost into that hot, fertile black gold every gardener dreams of. All right, here's the final verdict and some practical advice. This thousand-year-old trick is honestly a game-changer for gardeners who want efficiency without giving up compost quality. The no-turn, naturally heated pipe method works best when you pay careful attention to material ratios, moisture, and insulation. While, sure, you can still turn your pile the traditional way if you want, it's definitely not essential anymore. With this system, gardeners can make nutrient-rich compost faster with way less effort and keep that microbial diversity that really boosts soil health and crop yield. Don't be afraid to experiment with pile size, pipe placement, and layering, and just watch how your compost heats up and breaks down over the weeks. This method is super adaptable, totally scalable, and honestly perfect for gardeners of all experience levels. And hey, if you found this technique useful, go ahead and subscribe to Soil and Crop Central for more practical, myth-busting gardening insights. Share your results in the comments too, and help other gardeners discover the real power of naturally heated compost. With the right technique, ratios, and a little care, anyone can turn ordinary organic waste into a thriving soil booster that'll totally transform their garden.